Welcome to the question clip on chapter 10. And we're going to be dealing with question 10.4 in your question book. You can keep that handy or your suggested solutions as well. Like with any accounting question, we start by looking at the required part. In the required part for question 10.4, they ask us to prepare the statement of receipts and payments of Hatfield Tennis Club for the year ended 31 December 20.3. Now, before you get entangled in the given information, first draw up a framework for your answer that will assist with positively completing that. Now, in the statement of receipts and payments, if we know that it's for the year ended 31 December 20.3, we always start with the cash balance at the start of the year, and we end it off with the cash balance at the end of the year. So we're going to complete our framework, starting off with the balance on the 1st of January 20.3, which is the start of the year. Remember to put dates down and not wording. And then we're going to close off this statement right at the end with the balance at the end of the year. This is the cash balance. So you'll have to have information about what constitutes cash and cash equivalents, and that's all the money that you can get your hands on within the next 24 hours. The, this opening balance can change during the year with receipts and then payments. So it's easier to find something if you know what you're looking for. Remember this statement of receipts and payments for the year ended 31 December 20.3 is drawn up applying the cash concept. So far in accounting we've applied the accrual concept but this is not accrual, this is cash. So this will be the money that you actually received versus the payments that you actually made from your cash accounts, not the accrual concept. So there's a change in the focus at this point. If we look at the given information, they tell us that during a hailstorm on the 15th of January, the roof of the office of Hatfield Tennis Club collapsed and the accounting records of the club were destroyed. Fortunately, the tre treasurer of the club still had the following working papers of the statements of the club at his home. So this is part of incomplete record keeping. This treasurer actually kept the statement of income and expenditure, which is a cruel concept, if we can just remind ourselves of that. So this is the income that you were supposed to receive, that you've earned, and the expenses incurred. This is not the cash concept. So I can't just list these items as receipts and payments because that, this is not actual cash flow. This is the accrual concept. They also provide us with the statement of financial positions as at 31 December of both 20.2 and 20.3. So the 20.2 column will be the opening balances of all of the items, while the 20.3 column will be the closing balances. The approach towards this question is not to start at the statement of income and expenditure, because then you're going to miss out on a number of cash transactions that actually never went through the statement of income and expenditure. So we're going to start with the statement of financial position as our starting point, and we're going to have a look at the movements between last year's closing balance and this year's closing balance. If the value of equipment changed from 23,000 to 28 and a half thousand, that's a difference of 5,500 Rand. This 5,500 Rand increase in equipment can only be due to the purchase of equipment. Now a purchase can occur either using money, cash or on credit. They don't give us any information to the contrary in the question that will inform us that the equipment was purchased on credit. Therefore, this 5,500 will be a cash purchase of equipment. There's no creditor for equipment either, so we don't owe the creditor that money anymore. So that 5,500 
increase in equipment will be as a result of a payment. So under your payments, you're going to include equipment purchased, and the 5,500 must be included in a bracket to indicate that it was a payment. Remember, this is receipts and payments, so we want the flow clearly identified as either inflows or outflows. So we use a bracket for the outflow. The next item in the statement of financial position is the accumulated appreciation that changed from 6,100 to 8,500. That's an increase of 2,400 rand. Now, if you think about the double entry for accumulated appreciation, we debit the depreciation account and we credit the accumulated appreciation. There's no mention of bank, so this cannot be a cash transaction. Depreciation is an adjustment at the end of the year, so there's no cash influence. If you refer to the statement of income and expenditure at the top here, you will also see that the 2,400 difference that we calculated is exactly the depreciation there. Accrual concept, I'm not interested in accrual, I'm interested in the cash concept. So the depreciation will not be included in my statement of receipts and payments. If you do include it, you're not adhering to the cash concept which this statement is based on. The next item in the statement of financial position is the investment that changed from 4,000 to 5,000 rand. That's an increase of 1,000. If I increase my investment, I can only get the funds from my bank account. No one else will give you money to invest. So this increase of a thousand rand is due to a decrease in my cash of one thousand rand. So I'm going to include that as an outflow, and that is investment. Okay, so we're already at item number three. If we have a look at the next item, we have tennis balls on hand at the start of the year 180, at the end of the year 210, and we also have, if we have an asset for consumables, we're also going to have an expense for the same consumable item, tennis balls of 3,600. The best approach, if you have information in both the statements, is to draw up a T account as your calculation. So we will be completing the tennis balls expense account. And now we're going to draw on your knowledge of previous chapters. If we had tennis balls on hand at the end of last year, we will first transfer this balance to our expense account because you will first use the old consumable goods before you purchase new ones. So this 180000 has to be transferred to the expense account. On the debit side, so that I can start using them. And that balance was 180 rand. If I got to the end of the year and I saw I have not yet consumed 210 rand worth of tennis balls, that will again be taken out of the expense account because it's not consumption, so I can't have it in my accrual account. So I will move that out on the credit side at the end of the year, 210. Now, the statement of income and expenditure shows tennis balls of 3,600. And now you have to remember, in the accrual concept, this 3,600 represents the tennis balls consumed because accrual is expenses incurred. This 3,600 does not constitute tennis balls purchased. So I have to think about the closing transfers for expense accounts. And a closing transfer for an expense is an entry on the credit side of this account. So I took the consumption of the tennis balls 
to the income and expenditure account on the credit side, 3,600. At this point, I need an entry on the debit side of this account to get the account to balance. And that balancing amount will be 3,630. An increase in my expense will be due to a purchase. And the purchase can either be cash or credit. They don't tell me anything to the contrary, so I can assume that that 3,630 was tennis balls purchased with money from the bank. So I do not use my closing transfer as the amount in the statement of receipts and payments. I'm looking for cash flow, so I have to use the 3,630. So I'm going to have my tennis balls purchased. And I'm going to use the bank amount of 3,630 rand in a bracket. Okay, so at this point, we use the tennis balls on hand and we use the tennis balls expense account at the top. If I follow the process, I won't omit any of the cash flow items. Membership fees receivable. I have 300 Rand and 140, but I also have membership fees received in advance at the end of the statement year. I have a membership fees income item and I have a membership fees written off item. So as soon as you have information in more than one position in the statements, the best approach would be to draw up a membership fees account. The membership fees account is drawn up in three phases. I start with the reversal of last year's adjustments. So my reversal will constitute the asset that will be entered on the debit, debit side. Membership fees receivable. The liability of last year on the credit side. Then I have the accounting entries for this year. So those were the reversals. Accounting entries for this year will be money that I received. It can be membership fees written off. I can have refunds on the debit side. And I can have my closing transfer, income and expenditure. That's phase two. So this is the current year's information. Then I will have my adjustments at the end of the current financial year. That will be my membership fees receivable. Remember, <coughs> this is an asset at the end of the year, so I credit the income and I debit the asset. The reversal of the asset at the start of the year is on the opposite side. So that was the reversal of the adjustment of last year. And then my membership fees received in advance will have to be cancelled out of this account. Okay, so I have my structure written down. Now I can include the amounts. The reversals of last year, I will get from the 20.2 column. So I had membership fees receivable of 300 Rand, and I had membership fees received in advance of 400 Rand. So these two, 300 and 400, will be the first phase, the reversal of the receivable and received in advance. Then if we can quickly do the adjustments, because we're in the statement of financial position, I had membership fees receivable of 140, 20.3 adjustment, 140. And I had membership fees received in advance of 500 and 
40 Rand. I got those two amounts from the 20.3 financial year. So I've included membership fees receivable, membership fees received in advance, and now I can go over to my statement of income and expenditure. This membership fees, according to the accrual concept, constitutes my closing transfer to the income and expenditure. So that 28,800 will be included in my closing transfer entry. It's not the bank. The bank is actually the balancing amount that we are looking for. We also had membership fees written off of 120. So I can include that as my membership fees written off. They don't mention anything in the additional information about a refund, nowhere in the question. So I can calculate the bank as my balancing amount of 28,980. That amount can earn me a mark in my statement of receipts and payments. Membership fees of 28,800 without a bracket because that was money coming in. Oh no, it's 28,980. Sorry. 28,980 because it's my bank amount. We've dealt with the membership fees, the membership fees written off. So now we can carry on in our statement of financial position. The next item that we encounter is the bank. 2,000 Rand at the start of the year, 6,210. Those are probably the easiest two marks to earn because we've got them written in our framework. Balance of cash at the start of the year and the balance of the cash at the end of the year. So I can just include my balance at the start of the year of 2,000 Rand. It's a positive balance, so it has no brackets. And then my balance at the end of the year of 6,210 Rand. So if I follow the statements, I will not forget any of the items. If we then get, go over to funds and liabilities, I started off with my accumulated fund, and now you just need to read very carefully. This information is already a movement, so I don't have to calculate the movement like at the top here. They tell me I started off with a balance on the 1st of January of 22,980. I have a surplus for the year of 4,440. This surplus is the result of my statement of income and expenditure. That means that we have to go back to this whole statement and include items that we have not yet ticked off that constitutes cash flowing in or out. We will just leave that until we're done with the whole statement. So that's a reminder that you have to run through the statement again. If we then have a look at the last item under the accumulated fund, the entrance fees of 3,500. Entrance fees <coughs> will have to be paid to the club. So if I debit the bank, I can credit entrance fees. The entrance fees can either be closed off as part of profit and loss, but that did not happen. That means that they capitalized the entrance fees of three and a half thousand. This is already the movement of the current year, and that will have to be a receipt in cash, although it's not part of my surplus or deficit calculation. It's still money that came towards the club. So I'm going to include my entrance fees. Of 3,500 Rand. As a receipt in the statement of receipts and payments. Okay, the last item that we still need to have a look at in the statement of financial position is wages payable of 100 Rand at the end of the year. We have information in the statement of financial position and we have salaries and wages information over there. So we're gonna draw up a T account again. Salaries and wages. 
they gave us the closing transfer for salaries and wages of 8,440. This is an expense that gets closed off on the credit side. So we've got income and expenditure of 8,440. At the end of the year, we had wages payable of 100 rand. So wages payable at the end of the year would have been on the debit side of 100 rand. And we are trying to calculate what we actually paid. So bank will be our balancing amount of 8,340. I can include that in my statement of receipts and payments. Eight thousand three hundred and forty. So at this point, we dealt with all the adjustments and the movements in cash from the statement of financial position. If you then run through your statement of income and expenditure and all the amounts that you have not yet dealt with, just identify them as either cash items or non-cash items. So if we run through these, Membership fees, we are happy with the amount that we included. Donations, you can't donate on credit, so that donation will be included as a receipt of money. Tournament registration fees, that will also be included as a receipt. So in my statement of receipts and payments, I include all my receipts over there. I already included the investments, the equipment purchase, the tennis balls, and the salaries and wages. So I just go through all these items. Water and electricity, 12,600, will also be included in my statement of receipts and payments as a payment. We already dealt with all of these items. And the last one is the general expenses of 2,400. And if everything went according to plan, your opening balance, 2,000, plus your receipts of 37, minus your payments of 33, will give you your closing balance of 6,210. I hope that you will find this video beneficial to your studies, and I look forward to speaking to you again.